More than a hundred years ago, Albert Einstein wrote down his postulates of spatial relativity. This reshaped the world of physics and we got closer to understanding the nature of light. The second of the two postulates explicitly states the speed of light in vacuum is constant. This changed our perception of the world. If light is constant, that means that the light we see has traveled to us for some specific fixed time before it reaches our eyes or telescopes. This also means that you are always looking into the past because what you see is limited by the speed of light in how fast you can know about your surroundings. As an example, it takes a bit more than 8 minutes for light from the sun to reach earth. Thus, if you look at the sun, then you are not looking at how it looks now, but rather how it looked around 8 minutes ago. If you look further away to the nearest star outside our solar system, Alpha Centauri, then this light is around 4 years old. Now what if you look as far as possible? Well, you wouldn't be able to see much because our eyes can only see specific wavelengths of light. But what a telescope would see would be the cosmic microwave background or CMB and that's the topic of today. Before we move on, let us recap what light is. In everyday life, we use the word light to describe the visible light that we see. However, visible light is nothing but electromagnetic radiation or waves. For a physicist, light is generally the entire spectrum of electromagnetic waves. Thus, it is not only visible light, but also gamma rays, x-rays, UV light, infrared light, microwaves and radio waves. What determines the classification of light is the energy or frequency, as described by Max Planck with the equation E is equal to H nu, where E is the energy of the photon, H is the Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the light wave. We can also describe light by wavelength using the relation between frequency and wavelength, where nu is equal to the inverse of lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. Thus, the lower the wavelength, the higher the energy. As mentioned already, light can be many things, but visible light is just electromagnetic waves with a wavelength between 380 and 780 nanometers. Now that we have a better idea of what light is, we can get back to the main topic. The idea is that the further away you look, the older the light is, because it takes a specific time for light to reach you. This also means that if you look out in the universe at places very far away, you are looking far into the past. If you are looking further and further away, you eventually get to a point where you can't go further. This is the CMB and it was first predicted by Ralph Alpha and Robert Herman in 1948. The existence of the CMB became clear in 1964 thanks to Arno Pantheas and Robert Wilson. They built a telescope to study radio astronomy and to perform satellite experiments. The experiment didn't go as planned and their measurements were disturbed by a rather uniform background noise. They had just discovered the CMB. This led to the Nobel Prize in 1978. At this point, most of the name cosmic microwave background should be clear. The word cosmic just refers to the fact that it's a cosmic observation and background because it is a constant background noise at a temperature around 2.7 Kelvin of the black body spectrum. The word microwave comes from the fact that the wavelength of the light from the CMB is so long that it is not visible light but microwaves. This is why humans would never be able to see the CMB we can, however, build telescopes that can see this type of light waves. If you have ever searched for a picture of the CMB, you will usually see a nice colorful picture of the CMB. These colors are simply put there by hand to highlight colder and hotter zones. The colors have nothing to do with the actual colors. These colors have nothing to do with the actual colors of the CMB because, as I said before, you can't see microwave light so it has no color to the human eye. The CMB has however not always been a microwave background. 
if we go back to the time when the CMB was formed, then you would have been able to see it with your own eyes. It would have been a very uniform red color. But as the years have passed, the wavelength of the light has been stretched out to the length of microwaves, and we can therefore no longer see it with our eyes. Having discussed some history and background information, let us try to understand what we are seeing. Back in the days, the light was just red, and now we can't see it with our telescopes. If we look more carefully, we see that in fact the CMB light is extremely uniform in temperature. This is a very interesting observation because this indicates that it was formed when the universe was firstly much hotter, but also small and in thermal equilibrium. The CMB thus behaves very much like one would expect from some very hot gas that then cools down after a long period of expansion. While the CMB is very uniform or isotropic, it is not perfectly isotropic. If you look really closely, then some parts are ever so slightly hotter and other parts are colder. This is what is usually highlighted with the colors. These small fluctuations match the ones one would expect from quantum fluctuations when the universe was rather tiny. While the fact that the CMB is almost completely isotropic is very interesting on its own, it turns out that studying these small fluctuations in some ways are even more interesting. As it turns out, the model that best seems to fit with the CMB observations is the Lambda CDM model. This model describes the universe as we know it. According to this model, the universe is around 69% dark energy, 26% dark matter and 5% baryonic matter or what we consider usual matter from the standard model. As it turns out, the small fluctuations in the CMB are very hard to explain without such a model. And by looking very closely at the CMB, we can precisely measure the values of the different contents of the universe. If one does a lot of painstaking data analysis, one can obtain the power spectrum of the CMB. And this allows us to get a handle on the situation. Because we have such precise measurements of the CMB, we can get a rather precise power spectrum. And this we can compare with theory. Dark energy, dark matter and baronic matter all have unique implications for the universe, so depending on how much you have of each, we get a different power spectrum. Thus one can simply take the lambda CDM model and then tune the parameters until the theory produces the exact same power spectrum that we have measured. Of course, one would also need to check that these parameters are consistent with other observations, but if your model can match the CMB power spectrum, then you're off to a very good start. The CMB is one of the primary reasons why we expect dark matter to exist, because it's not easy to explain the CMB without it. As I said, a lot of information is hiding in the CMB power spectrum, so let me just give you a rough feel of what the different peaks mean. There are many more parameters than we have discussed so far, which affect this result. But let us consider a few aspects. The curvature of space affects the position of the peaks, more precisely the distance between the peaks. In a closed universe, the peaks would be closer together and in an open, they would be further apart. The dark energy parameter plays a similar role, but it has a smaller effect. Changing the matter density have a different effect. If you have more baryons or usual matter, then the odd peaks become larger and the even peaks become smaller. If you have more matter in total, thus including dark matter, then it also affects if the odd or even peaks are higher. But generally speaking, more matter leads to a smaller amplitude in the spectrum and less matter increases the overall amplitude. This should give you an idea of how the different parameters create different results. If you would like to play with this yourself and see how changing the different parameters give you a different CMB, then check the description as I put a link to a cool website where you can play with it yourself. The CMB is very interesting and the Lambda CDM model generally does a good job of explaining it. It should be clear that we can get much information from carefully looking at the CMB. The only thing to mention is the reason behind the almost perfect uniformity of the CMB. The most plausible explanation by the Lambda CDM model is inflation, as this would naturally smooth out the universe such that we would obtain a very uniform CMB just like we see. And then the small imperfections are simply quantum fluctuations. Alternatively, one would require some serious fine-tuning to explain it. 
But that's all I had to say today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Please support the channel using the link below. As always, if you liked the video, please smash the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe for more content. Stay tuned for the next video.